and Wayne M. Richards. Present. Vice Chair Gene L. Enright is currently absent. Secretary Treasurer George E. Mastix is currently absent. Commissioner Blair J. Sigmund. Here. Commissioner Peyton W. MacArthur. Here. Executive Director Manuel Amira. I'm here. Court Counsel Greg Thicken. Here. Mr. Chair, we have a quorum. Thank you. Would we please stand for the pledge of allegiance? <coughs> to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please let the record reflect the condition of George Mastix is present. Over the 
project only used to have a small sliver of a settling basin. Now you've got two additional settling basins on top of that. We call one of them as the extended and the larger one as the expanded. We have four components of advanced maintenance in Palm Beach just to help with all the shoaling that occurs. Palm Beach is definitely one of our high shoaling ports. Um, as you can see in the history, we have come out here every single year, sometimes twice a year, just to make sure that all the material is cleared out and we all don't have any pilot restrictions. As far as funding goes, Port of Palm Beach is in our president's budget every year. We make sure of it. It's a very important port to us. We know the critical need that it poses. We know that it shoals in often, even though we have all these mitigated features. We also ensure that Port of Palm Beach is in what we call as work plan funding, or as we say, it's our contingency, just in case there's something that happens that we didn't anticipate, where all of a sudden we have more quantity, or there's an emergency, or something like that. So we always make sure that Port of Palm Beach has a package of the work plan. And our division office in Atlanta, our headquarters, everybody is always aware of the need at Port of Palm Beach. So I don't think there's been a year where we have not missed getting funding for Port of Palm Beach. Um, I know that was a lot of information kind of combined <coughs> in one, but I'm happy to take questions so, and explain it a little bit more. Commissioner Sick. Yes, sir. Yes. Um, could you first or someone from our staff tell me who's doing the dredging this year? Yes, sir. It's a Great Lakes Dredge and Dock. Yeah, they've been here before. They've done a good job. And I think one of our concerns uh, from our staff, um, you guys always do a fantastic job and always take care of us. But for some reason last year, it's like the dredger kind of left in the middle of the night, you know, without even letting us know. And I don't know if it was for the uh, maintenance dredging, but last year we had that problem. And I'm just wondering if you were aware of it or is there something that we need to do to make sure that it doesn't happen again? the dredger left. I'm not well, sure. Tom could probably, or Manny probably could expand on uh, what happened. May I Yes, uh, this was during the uh, Thanksgiving time frame. Right? Okay. We had to have an emergency uh, dredge. It cost about $300,000 of which we had to make a out. And what had happened was we were hoping that they could, and I don't remember exactly the, uh, the number of cubic uh, yards. Oh, yeah. And in the middle of the night, they picked up the left, and then by the time we realized they were up in uh, Delaware, so we couldn't get that. I think, um, and I'll be familiar with it, I'm correct if I'm wrong, I remember Great Lakes was the one that had come in just to take care of a high spot mm -hmm. that was in the channel, and from what I understand, when Great Lakes did come in, they were actually on their way out from another job further south in the county, and we requested them to come take care of this high spot just as they were going on, and part of the reason we wanted them to come that high spot when we looked at it was only anywhere between five and seven thousand cubic yards. So what Great Lakes did is they just came, took care of that particular quantity, their responsibility was done and they left. I think the concern was they may have removed the appropriate amount of, of, of material, but we still had a problem. Understood. So I don't know if they took it from the right area or if they needed to remove more, but we had the problem after they left and they were gone before we knew. Well, and, and I understand that. And if we saw that there was more to address and we didn't capture it, we would have ensured that Great Lakes was there. But the thing with Palm Beach that's unique is sometimes material just comes up overnight, in all honesty. And we've done a pre-dredge, a post-dredge, to make sure that the contractor came in and addressed what that need was when we initially saw that. <coughs> so it might have been one of those circumstances. I'm not saying that we would not take care of the port, but that's, I'm assuming that's exactly what happened. If they came in, they took care of the hot spot, and literally a day or two later, we bet we were back up with a problem. And I know we worked with the port and Tom and Annie a lot with different scenarios to bring another dredge back to take care of that. And then fortunately, the port had the ability to address that at that time. So this, let's go back to this before, is, it, is that the current plan? So when it said when the when we look at 37 plus two, does that mean we should get 39 when we leave? Explain that please. Sure. For every project that we dredge, we have the, the two foot is called the allowable focus. That's your um, margin of error when a dredge is dredging. You can never 
never get a clean 37 B. So when you say 37 plus 2, you, you can expect that your channel to be anywhere between 37 and 39. Okay. Well, well, thank you. We'll look forward to this obviously. for providing board staff, Mr. Lending, our engineer, with statistics on the the um, dredging over the years. And, um, that information will be very helpful, and uh, perhaps we can even put it on our website so everybody has the same information. Sure. But, and our, uh, after a dredging event is done, we do a fan survey, condition surveys once a quarter. And those surveys are actually posted on our Corps of Engineers website that's accessible to the public. So, we just put it on ours as well. The staff can do that. Thank you. Thank you. Time for the last comment. Mr. Chairman, Commissioners, uh, Sharisha is going to be moving on to a better promotion. So, she's not going to be with us much longer. Wow. Yeah. Actually, Monday she's going to be with us. It's nice to have you here. How long have you been here? For like a month? Or have you been, uh, how long have you been our representative? Oh, for the fourth? Uh, three years. You've been in three years? Yes, sir. But uh, it's usually Tim Murphy's face that you see. Yeah, you know, exactly. Uh, okay. We, uh, well, we let Tim do it, but uh, I had the good opportunity to be here. There he is. Final comment. Would you just make sure that your successor knows that people that treat the poor well, uh, well move right up the ladder? <laughs> <laughs> we wish you the best. Thank you very much. Awesome. We'll be out here, I have been asked to present the port's financial results for the first quarter of 2016, as well as to review the port's cash position. 
as the port's financial performance is directly contingent on the volume of business that crosses through our port, I'd like to start with the volume statistics for the first three months of 2016. Gross tonnage increased by 96,000 tons over last year, or about 18%. Container volume was basically flat with last year, up about one half of 1%. Break bulk increased 10,000 tons, nearly 75%, as our rebar shipments commenced during that period. Asphalt shipments increased by 20%, hitting 4,000 tons this year. Sugar and molasses increased by 80,000 tons when combined, by far the biggest volume driver in the past three months. Inbound rail cars fell slightly, while 15 additional cargo vessels came to the port. Cruise passengers increased by 80,000. This reflected the fact that last year, the large multi-day cruise ship was not sailing. Income before capital contributions in, increased $300,000 from, in the, from the first quarter of 2015. Again, in, 19, in, 19, in 2015, the multi-day cruise vessel was not sailing and this resulted in almost a break even for the first three months. Revenue to date this year has exceeded 2015 by $660,000 or over 20%. Operating expenses rose by $400,000, a significant increase over last year. All other income expense items are relatively consistent with last year's results. I'd like now to take a few minutes to explain the revenue and expense increases. Again, revenue this year far exceeded 2015 by $660,000. Total cruise revenue increased by $227,000 and accounted for a full one-third of our increase as the multi-day vessel restarted operations and the day cruise commenced a consistent sailing schedule. The exceptional sugar volume shift coupled with the surcharge related to slip three resulted in a $264,000 increase or again over one-third coming from sugar. Yacht ship, Ruti Parker host, increased nearly $60,000. Lease payments, including space assignments, added $60,000. Huge volume increase resulting in an additional $50,000. Tropical added $40,000 primarily due to rate increases and a slight increase in volume. And the increased asphalt volume provided an integral revenue at $20,000. All other sources were lower by about forty-seven, dollars predominantly due to a lower CMEX guarantee in the first quarter. Operating expenses increased by 400000 in the first quarter. First, there was one additional payroll this year as compared to 2015, simply a matter of timing the way pay cycles fell, and that accounted to $120,000. With the restart of the multi-day cruise vessel, our security costs returned to normal levels. This added about $100,000 worth of expense this year. There were significant increases in our water rates in September of last year. These rate increases and increased usage caused expenses to go up by about 75,000. Additionally, last year was artificially low as we were applying a $40,000 credit resulting from a rebuilding from Riviera Beach. Our expenses related to maintaining buildings and grounds increased by nearly 50,000. Of this, through 30,000 was related to the MOB and the cruise terminal. Again, there were no sailings last year. Business development increased spending by about 24,000. Predominantly in trade development is anticipated to remain on budget. We consider this just timing. Finally, last year we established a bad debt reserve for the previous day cruise operator of approximately $40,000. This results in favorability this year. Some other financial issues and challenges we're facing as the year goes on. Depreciation expense was flat with prior year, but once slip free is capitalized, which will be in the next month or two, it will exceed last year, next, last year by $50,000 a month going forward. Interest expense was favorable by approximately $21,000 for the quarter as a result of last year's refunding. This is not expected to continue going forward. <clears throat> Moving on to cash. The primary financial objective of the port is to generate sufficient cash so as to continually refurbish, enhance, and where possible, expand the port's infrastructure. Over the past three years, we have generated over $5 million which has allowed the refurbishment of slip free and leaves us with $4.6 million of funds for birth 17. A quick understanding of our annual cash flows is presented on this chart. Nine cash expenses are added back to net profit and reflect the total amount of cash available from operations for the year. We, we then need to deduct our principal payments on our debt and we are bound by our bound covenants to 
allocate about 10% of prior year's revenue toward renewable replacement and business development. The rest is available for the infrastructure. There were other considerations, working capital changes, but this is a pretty good understanding of where the money comes from. <coughs> the Port of Palm Beach continues to maintain a solid cash position as seen in this five year history. We are mandated at the port to classify our cash balances into three categories. The first one and the largest is unrestricted cash. This is used to meet our normal operating expenses throughout the year and day to day obligations. A fiscally sound balance to maintain and one that is looked on favorable by the investment community is an amount that is equivalent to approximately one year of cash operating expenses. This year that amount will be somewhere between 8.5 and $9 million. General restricted cash is that is which is directly linked to a contractual or a legal obligation and is not available for general use. Here we have the funds committed to capital projects that are required by FDOT and approved by UR board. Additionally, general restriction includes the business development and renewal replacement funds, which I mentioned earlier, as well as some cash that we hold on security deposits as a result of our tenants. The debt restricted 4.7 million is a deposit that is required to be held by upon our bonds. It is held in the Bank of New York. It is 4.7 million, and we are required to keep it there until the year 2028. It's not accessible. If we go into the General restricted cash includes the cash required to either fund existing FDOT commitments or cash available for future projects. At the end of 2015, the port held 6.2 million of cash dedicated to projects. We have 4.6 million set aside for Bird 17. We have roughly 330,000 required to close outs, slip three, and there's another 1.3 million that stands there for other projects. It is this uncommitted 1.3 that should be used to fund either new projects and or revised costs for existing projects. Additionally, the category of general restricted are the funds required for renewal replacement of business development. Here, these amounts can be redirected by the board <coughs> to other areas, either general or in general restricted, only if the board feels that the bondholders would agree that there's an excess. Basically, you can see that at the end of 2015, we had about $22 million worth of cash remain in sound cash position. Thank you, and are there any questions? Yeah, before we get to the questions, uh, Dr. Elmira and I were looking at the um, our agenda a few weeks ago, and, and, and I, I have decided as your chair that each month we're going to have a, a presentation either from our finance, finance department or marketing so that when we leave, or we actually leave here, the public leaves here for more information than which they came. So next month I'm looking to have a presentation from one of our major suppliers. The following month it might be a supplier, or some other area of interest, but the financial data as well as information about our tenants we feel is very important to this board and to those in attendance. Any questions for Mrs. Zelensky? Blair. Um, well, how much uh, bond debt do we have totally? Approximately, just approximately about 40 million. 40? A little under 40. Any, any other further questions? I just have one more on there. I know basically have four outstanding instruments. Two are private placements with the bank that do, do not allow us to uh, refund or change them out. Obviously pay them off, but refunding is not allowed. And the two remaining bond, bond funds do not, bond amounts do not allow for any refunding. They're all at very conservative, very good interest rates. Um, and you can see that last time Moody's raised our ratings. So in the future, with the right circumstances and the right needs, we may be able to go out to the bond market. Very good. Well, obviously our cash position is strong. We're able to fund all of our projects that we have lined up. Uh, any further questions? Thank you all. Good job. Appreciate it. We will now move to the consent agenda. Is there a motion with regards to the consent agenda? Is there a motion to approve the consent agenda? Just looking through the agenda. I, I would like to just add one, add one quick question sure. on E13. E well, let's have a motion to move and we'll, we'll have a small 
So motion to approve and accept with the discussion of E13. So moved. Okay. Seconded by Commissioner Wright. E13, please. Yeah. Is there a question or? A yeah, I just would, maybe you could just uh, explain exactly what's happening with the uh, Car the sugars, whoever there could tell. Right there, where the red line is, is where we want to relocate the fence back uh, with the third site of this project. And what that will do is allow a uh, larger radius for the, the trucks to turn around. Makes sense. Yeah. Good. Okay, that's kind of what I thought. Just checking. Okay. <laughs> uh, any further questions? Okay. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Uh, thank you. Uh, thank you. Uh, all those in favor, please say aye. Uh, opposed, and then motion carries unanimously. Five zero. Thank you, Mr. Almanier. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, around the port, we start with the port's Black History Month video, which will be about two hours, <laughs> a couple of minutes. <laughs> the port uh, produced a short video, which we're about to see, uh, celebrating Black History Month. <coughs> we should have it in about two seconds. Let me continue speaking. In the following video, you will see some of our staff and commission discussing African American history and what Black History Month means to them. We had a great time making this video and are proud to present it for the first time here tonight. This video will also be used in email marketing and social media campaign and is timeless, meaning we can use it year after year.
due to that pain, I rise. I'm a black ocean, leaping and wide, welling and swelling, I bear in the tide, leaving behind nights of terror and fear, I rise. Into a daybreak that's wondrously clear, I rise. Bringing the gifts that my ancestors gave, I am the dream and the hope of the slave. I rise, I rise, I will rise. By Maya Angelou. Washington, D.C. That is scheduled for April the 6th 
and rather April the 4th through the 6th. If there are any questions, I would love to be able to yeah, um, it, well, I missed the uh, special meeting that we had last week, um, but do we make it perfectly clear at that meeting about um, any time we have a like an official or anyone in government that they're more than welcome to come to the board, no matter if they're a Democrat, Republican, Independent. We've done that over the years, and we've had all you know everyone here, and it, it, it seemed that this was something that we did because. Uh, she was running for president, but in reality, we've had just as many people from the Republican Party and the Independent Party over the years that have come in here and, and spoke or toured. Sure. So as long as it's on the record that you know, if someone contacts us from Tallahassee or Washington, and we've had, you know, I think years ago, I remember Representative Schuster was here, and uh, we've had numerous other people from Washington. We just make it available, and we're not close to any one party or affiliation. So we did right. make it clear, but it's good that we did it again just now. At the meeting, uh, the emergency meeting <coughs> on Friday, I brought up, and we couldn't uh, vote on it because it was um, not advertised. But um, I think we need to amend our policy, and I brought this up. I actually thought it was going to be added to the agenda today. I also contacted Mr. Zelensky and asked for a breakdown of the costs. He had given me a figure, and I haven't received those costs either. I think this is something we need to put on the agenda next month to, uh, to formally amend the policy. And after we do so, maybe uh, we can have staff reach out to all the presidential candidates from major parties and tell them we would love to have them. If I if I may, just one answer. Uh, we're still accumulating all the expenses, but we should have it by tomorrow. Sure. And then I guess your question is that um, when we extend an invitation, would that be to federal uh, individuals, individuals running for federal office? Or I hope we don't open it up to everybody in the world. Well, and, and, and um, <coughs> I think we should have some kind of limits because then if you say everyone, then every other week or something you're going to have someone running for state office running for this i think that we should only we should limit it only to federal offices and the governor's office uh, instead of everyone because we're going to get in trouble or maybe just um state well if you say state offices then you're going to come with local senators but i just think that it should, it should be federal or the governor regardless of party yes staff to work this up, but we realized this was a significant burden on staff uh, and will also have a financial impact of sorts, I believe, on the board. We don't want to have anyone believe we are in favor of any candidate. We've had the governor here, other than governor, we've had a Democratic candidate. So that's not the concern, but we need to have staff work it up. And we will be on the next month's agenda because the request has been made, but we do need to work up and have discussions leading up to that meeting. And at our earlier meeting, I had suggested limiting it to um, statewide candidates or federal candidates. Mm -hmm. You know, not every candidate. So not the, um, work with staff between places between well, now and next meeting to, to get something we'll look at it next meeting. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Okay, let's go to Mr. Lundy. Good afternoon, commissioners. In addition to my written report, the update of the Army Corps of Engineers maintenance stretching project. We have been in contact and would like to hire Dr. Sword as a consultant to validate that our objectives were met, during, were met with regard to the Army Corps of Engineers maintenance stretching project. Jeff Littlejohn would be our contact person for the with project. Jeff is a former Florida Department of Environmental Protection employee to run the local office here. He's involved with the Florida Ports Council. The cost of the contract would not ex exceed the amount of $6,500 plus the out-of-pocket cost of $1,000. With the rezoning of oh, ours. Commissioner Sickler, Tom, could you please uh, explain to me, I read the, the brief scope. Is he going to be here actively and going out or is he going to be in his desk in Jacksonville or wherever? No, he's going to he's gonna he's gonna actually be here. We're going to uh, okay. be out on the dredge and uh, observe the, the dredging happening. He's going to assist with uh, 
uh, getting all the surveys that, that the Army Corps, the contractors that they do, and then you can just validate what um, Good. Okay. what you need on. Uh, so, uh, and this is under your authority, Mr. O'Leary? It is under my signing authority. And if I can just bring one more, we have requested a similar quote it was coming in at around $28,900. So we were able to, as you can see, bring it, okay. back, bring it back down to earth. Sure. With regard to the annex property rezoning and land use amendment, our first meeting has currently been scheduled to be reviewed and discussed at the March 10th City Review or Beach Planning and Zoning Meeting. At the present time, we have not received any comments back from the city staff but I would anticipate them next week as this would give us a chance to respond to them in a timely fashion. Of the 11 holes that we found in the seawall or that our consultant found in our seawall on Earth One, I have found eight of them. With the assistance of the maintenance department and the local 402 Steelworkers Union, tucker patches have been placed on six of the holes. I brought an example of a tucker patch. This goes through the whole the whole hole and then Tighten that down. That works really well. That's the video. Splash zone. Splash zone will be placed over the steel patches, which will uh, occur next Wednesday. We hired a contractor, Seawall Doctors, to help us fill the void and stabilize the soil behind the seawall. They pump a non-toxic, environmental-friendly mixture of chemicals, which then mixes with the sand. The material expands to 20 size and volume and it forms a stable backfill material. This occurred without any impact to our existing tenants on birth number one. The pump material uh, discovered several, several additional holes in the sheet pile. I calculated the volume of the void that we filled so far. We would cover the front of the dais to the back wall, from that wall to that wall, or the ceiling. <coughs> Big holes. That was one of the holes that the sand was coming out. This is the puppy patch that I installed. There's a that uh, leak. Leak is again. So you can see a lot of material leaking behind the sheet wall. Sheet uh, wall. Commission Super, how old is that wall? It is now our oldest wall. It's probably 40, yeah. 45. Currently, we have spent about $18,000 with this contractor to help us fill the voids. I estimated an additional $8,500. Next month, I will be asking the board to ratify those costs with this contractor. And then the last video that you'll see here is with the, some of the material where they pumped in here. You can see it coming out of the cracks. It actually exposes other holes in the sheet pile. You can see that there's a couple of them on that back wall. Commissioners, a storm came through the port Tuesday morning. It dislodged a 34-foot tri-hull sailboat. The vessel was anchored in the area south of the attorney base. The vessel's name was named Tri again. It ended up on the rocks near Peanut Island, the Peanut Island snorkeling area. I'm cur currently working with Daniel Beach from the uh, Palm Beach County Department of Environmental Resource Management to have the vessel removed and disposed of. Palm Beach County has funding available and budgeted for this type of uh, issue. The cost for the removal and, and uh, disposal will be in excess of $10,000. Commissioner, that's all I have right now. Um, is there no uh, registration number on that? They have, they have the name of the owner. Um, yeah, they, they've been in contact with the owner who just says that, that he doesn't have the means to have re to pull that means to get it pulled out. We attempted to call it, but the phone number that we called is just not, not accepting the phone call. Is the, uh, is the ship worth anything? I mean, I mean, the boat is it? <laughs> <or> is it <laughs> nothing. It's a jungle. No, I don't mean that. <laughs> It's a plywood-made boat. Oh, it basically has a hole in the hull uh, that's actually taken on water. 
I mean, one of the reasons the Coast Guard couldn't uh, basically have the vessel removed is because it doesn't have a motor, it doesn't have any fluids in it. If there was actual fluids floating from the vessel, it would have been gone already. But since there's no fluid, it's good. Uh, 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 on um, birth 17, do we need to take some action on that? Or birth 17 will be coming up under item G1. Okay, thank you. And we are now on item G1. Good time. Item G1 is the birth 17 project. The birth 17 bids were received on February 1st. The bids came in higher than the funding we currently have available. So we're working on additional on additional funding requirements for that project. I anticipate the funding to be solidified by the March board meeting. I, today I am not going to request any action be taken, but I would like to update the commissioners on the project. At the present time, the board can birth nine vessels, 300 foot or larger in, inside our berths. Verse 17 would give us a 10th bird, making it useful and valuable. Amira, as a potential customer, would be would work there, out of there, and there are also potential future rail possibilities in this area. This photo here shows the initial project uh, scope of work. Before I talk about the bids, I would like to discuss the finance. We originally obtained a $9.2 million of FSTED bond funding for this project. Of the $9.2 million we have spent or committed to $1.2 million, leaving approximately $8 million left over. As for the bids we received, we had 11 bidders. The bids, the base bids range between just under $11.2 million and up to just over $14 million. The base bid included reinforced concrete pavement. We also had two other alternate bids in there. One was, alternate number one was for rolled concrete pavement, and alternate number two is our typical asphalt pavement section. The apparent low bidder was LM Heavy Civil Construction. Their base bid was $11,167,767. If we put alternate number two with using the asphalt pavement section, the revised project bid would be ten million four hundred and twenty dollars four hundred and twenty thousand five hundred and sixty seven dollars currently we have about eight million dollars remaining in the bond funds that will leave us with a shortfall of about two point four million dollars we've been in discussions with the FSED staff for the reallocation of the funds that we were to use with the passenger loading bridge this this 1.5 million dollars should be and will be available in October of 2016. I have been in dis many discussions with FDOT. I have asked for $1.5 million in additional grant funds. We are working to redirect the remaining funds from the SIP 3 project at a 50 50 split. The total of that would become about $1.6 million, so we're right in the area where we want to be. Uh, both sources of these funds would be 50 50 funding. It would leave us with a, a minimum contingency cushion of about $500,000. We are also looking at other cost saving <coughs> options, one by reducing the contractor's scope of work. So we just take out a, a section of the uh, project. Commissioners, I just wanted to update you on this important project. There is no decision that I'm requesting today. Tarina Kirkley is here from LM Heavy uh, Civil Construction. And we are available to answer any questions. Okay. Uh, are there any questions? Uh, I'm going to, uh, Ms. Kirkley, uh, welcome. Just want to make sure, obviously, we're not going to make an award today, but are you familiar with the Ports Bill Independent Office? Oh, yes. Okay. And should you be awarded this at the next meeting or the meeting thereafter, are you prepared to follow it to the letter of the law? Yes. Okay. That's very important. We've had issues in the past, and we don't want to have any issues on this project. Okay. I have another Thank question. You. And also, are you familiar with our other policy where subcontractors 
you would have to have a percentage of worth of minority subcontract. Yes. You're familiar with that one also. Okay. Uh, well, please stand ready and hopefully in, in the near future we're going to move forward. Commissioner? Uh, could you tell me uh, some of the other projects that you have done in the state of Florida that would be similar <coughs> to the uh, We are from Massachusetts. That's where the headquarters is. Um, They've done a lot of the marine work up there. I'm from this area, and they hired me down here in Pompano. Um, and I'm not nearly as familiar, you know, as familiar as this other gentleman. Tell me from Tom. Yeah, Tom would. He's they, Tom's met with both our engineers. They have completed a project actually at our airport right over there. Yes. I, I have a question. Uh, I guess I'm a little confused because have we chosen, selected them? No. Because this, if we have not, I'm just being fair, we would have to have other companies and ask some questions too. I'm not saying we're not going to select you or anything like that. I'm just saying we need to have evil. They're the little bidders. Oh, they're the lowest bidders. So therefore, okay. Okay. Thank you. 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 Thank um, why will those funds, why do we expect them to be released in October? What is, what's the signature of October? The uh, Vested folks meet twice a year. We just had our first meeting back uh, a couple of weeks back. That's when I presented <coughs> what we would like to do. Then we have to follow a procedure by contacting the Vested chairman, which I used to be last year, not any longer. And then we meet again in the month of you know, October for we're actually being awarded that amount. And how confident are you that that will in fact be awarded? The 1.5, 100%, the remaining 99.9. Very good, thank you. Very good. <clears throat> good afternoon, commissioners. As part of the 2014 Port Security Grant Program, U.S. Department of Homeland Security awarded the court $1.9 million uh, in federal security funding for situational awareness and as part of the Cybersecurity Infrastructure Protection Program. The agreements delineated the responsibilities of the sheriffs, police, and tropical shipping for activities under this grant. Federal funding uh, of $1.9 million with a 25% match is required for these organizations and agencies for their portion of the grants. Uh, project General Description is a terminal operating system, shot spotter, integrated command and control systems, body cameras, and other uh, software related items. Board staff respectfully request the board to approve and authorize the executive director to execute the memorandums of understanding for the city of Riviera Beach, police department, Palm Beach County Sheriff's Office and for tropical shipping. Okay, um, I have gone over this in great detail with Ms. O'Meara and Mr. Hearn, and I understand it and it makes sense. Michelle, please. I just want you to specifically just tell us exactly. I, I, I know that uh, some people in the audience might not exactly know how much um, the grants are and how much each individual entity, for example, we are applying for the grant and which will assist the sheriff department, also the city of the beach and tropical shipping. Could you inform us the amount of funds they will receive by report, uh, taking charge and applying for grants and then making it possible for them to receive the funding? Could you share that with us? Well, the federal funds that were received by the court and that will be distributed to the local agencies, uh, the sheriff's department will receive $800,000 the City of Riviera Beach will receive $535,000 and Tropical Shipping will receive $775,000. Now that is 75% of the project cost. They will need to apply an additional 25% on top of that. Mr. Hurry, Major Allen here? Major Allen is in the uh, SEG Madden back this file. And Mr. Mahoney should be back there in SEG as well. We're all here. I want to thank everyone for being here. Uh, Ken, do you want us to? Uh, the approval of the agenda item, and then I think they would like to comment to the board upon the Please. approval of the item. So moved. Second. A motion has been made and probably seconded. 
All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. aye. Motion carries. Gentlemen, can you approach the guys? So, Jamie, Jamie, getting hundreds of thousands of dollars. <laughs> Why did I single you out? <laughs> Chief Madden. Mike Madden, uh, City of Riviera Beach. Just briefly, I'd like to thank the board uh, for an opportunity for uh, another partnership that I think will be mutually beneficial. We've done this before with the board. Uh, it's paying dividends now with our latest uh, technology installations, and I think this is uh, going to be another great benefit to the board. Chief, and when, when I think this will be on your March 2nd agenda, is that your last correct? Uh, I myself actually uh, paid in as a liaison. Okay. <coughs> would, you, would you be able to attend a meeting to? So, Commissioner uh, McCarthy will be there with you and Mr. Hearn on March 7th at the City Council. Thank you, Peter. Well, thank you. <coughs> Major, hello. Good to see you again. Doug Tell, I'm, I'm Major Allen, the Sheriff's Officer on Homeland Security Bureau. I brought with me Scott Newton, who's the Director of our Fusion Center, and Shannon Sid, who's our Grants Coordinator. Welcome. Thank you for being here. They're the real brains of the operation. Uh, I'd like to thank Ken Hurd. I'd like to thank you all for the opportunity to come here and really uh, thank you for your for the opportunity and for everything you've shared with us and for giving us the opportunity to, to share back with the community um, and provide you with security, with the tools that we need to do the job for you all. As you know, uh, part of the security is our Marine unit, the bomb squad, the aviation, things, things of that nature. You've benefited us help us provide the service that, that we need to, to be grant. Well, thank you for all that you do as well. Appreciate okay. it. Thank you. Ms. Mody, welcome. Welcome. Good afternoon, everybody. It's great to be here, and uh, sure. certainly a pleasure to say thank you on behalf of Tropical Shipping uh, for uh, facilitating this grant for us. Uh, on behalf of Tropical, I'm glad to be here. I'm the Vice President of Marine Operations. I've also got with me Jennifer Nuchin. Thank you. Good afternoon. Good to see you. Thank you. And as Tropical has gone about the last year getting together this project, our new terminal operating system, uh, this, this grant will allow us to, through the command and control center that the port has got, allow us to integrate some of our manifests, our dangerous goods, our hazmats, to make them available to the port, to CDP, and to U.S. Coast Guard. That, in part, uh, is what this will do for us to help protect Port, our tenants, our customers, and the public around the port here, as well as our waterways. Well, Jamie, we look forward to continue working with you. And I know this is going to be a pretty important year. We have quite a few items coming up, so we, we look forward to working that out with you. Thank you for being here. On behalf of uh, Tropical Shipping, our pleasure. Thank you. Commissioner Carson. Commissioner Carson. Mr. Chair, I'd uh, like to thank everybody involved, and I'm sure staff will do this anyway, but at the appropriate time, this would be an action. Excellent item for a press release to show how the port is reaching out and working with our not only with our tenants but with our neighbors as well. And, and Ken Hearn, once again, great job. Thank you. Thank you. To add to that release, um, I don't know if it's appropriate, but if we can also um, do the bullet points and uh, inform the public of other things, of other partnerships we, we've included in the city and also our neighbors, and because I know that we gave them. I'm a big supporter of public outreach. Actually, next week, uh, I mean, not too long ago, we did the Singer Island Civic Association. And next week, I'm actually giving a presentation to the Criminal Justice Institute at the courthouse on Thursday. Thank you. Thank you very much. Great work. Jerry, I think you're up on H2. H2 is a lease for our Southgate facility. I will ask afternoon that this item be postponed until next month. On Friday afternoon, I received a call from one of the principals. There are a couple items they want to add to the lease. Their attorney, however, was not able to meet with us until tomorrow, so I'd like the opportunity to bring it back to you next month. Okay, that's fine. Uh, yes. 
if I, if I may, if you have a moment, I'd like to also go through the occupancy at Southgate with you. We have two new tenants that are going to be leasing space there. This is the lease that you have in front of you. I'll be coming back to you next month. They will be taking a warehouse bay as well as a receiving office. Currently, the two center bays are uh, Grand Celebration. They're, they lease both bays currently. They will be consolidating to one bay. The open bay will be used for general cargo for all tenants at the port. The furthest west bay is currently leased by port contractors. So our, our entire warehouse will be used. Uh, below that, you'll see the mezzanine offices, which are leased by port contractors. Our quick office, as you all know, next to it, our new seafare center. We have port archives. And to the far east, we I will have another lease for you next month for a new tenant on the far east mezzanine suite as well. Right, very good. Thank you. Um, I inadvertently missed two cards on G1. I see Pat Emmett just stepped out. Yes. Is Mr. Bailey here? Would you wish to speak here? No, like to speak. Please don't throw it in. I apologize. This is on item G1, so it's 17, but better late than ever. Hi. Uh, <coughs> uh, good afternoon, Chairman Richard, Commissioner. My name is uh, Jeff Bailey. I'm the uh, President and Training Director at Local 402 Iron Workers. Um, my uh, partner, business partner, Sean Mitchell, he was able to be here this evening. He would like to uh, speak. Um, the uh, First like 17. Yeah, the 17th. I'd like to thank uh, Manny and Tom Lundin for utilizing our apprentices and uh, the last few months doing some of your structural repairs and the letter of accommodation that you wrote on their good work. I appreciate that very much. Uh, today under item G1, the bid on the slip project is of huge interest to us, the iron workers. The policies you have as a board to put in place utilizing the local apprentices and journeymen can have a huge impact for our local community, and you should be uh, commended on making those decisions. Uh, the local iron workers will gladly work with any contractor to order this project, provided they will abide by board policies and utilize all workers on all work that is performed by us, not on some, but all. With proper oversight, we know the intent of your policies will be enforced. That being said, Again, thank you for supporting the apprenticeship of pathways, not to just jobs, but to good paying, trained careers. And uh, Sean Mitchell, the business manager of Ironwork Local 402 and the president of the Palm Beach uh, Coast Building Trades. I'd like to thank you guys. Thanks, Mary. Thank you for being here. I appreciate it. Any further comments from members of the public? I don't have any other cards. Hearing none, we'll close that segment and we'll go to the board. My esteemed colleague to the left. No, no, no. Uh, Vice Chair Emmerich. Yeah. Blair? Yeah. You sure? Yeah. Mr. McCarthy? None, no, no, no. I have nothing further. Um, actually, I have one or two things. That, that video really was very impressive and moving. Wow. And I'm very proud that this team put that together. Very proud. You guys did a great job. Did you were in it? Because it 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 it, it appears that all the right, the they, they will not twist their arms. No, I don't twist arms, but I but he made the comment. So, okay. so think about the comment he made. And so, I think that Commissioner Bassett should have a word in the video, and also the other two commissioners, and not just the minority two who are on the board, and yes, and also other staff members to make it diverse. Thank you. Uh, last for me, the master plan. Uh, Mandy, please make sure we have a public meeting on the master plan. We want input, even though this is a minor revision, we, we want input from the public. I see uh, Karen Marcus is back there, hopefully she'll attend, and many others that are here. Lagoon Keepers, can you not move that, that little that sailboat? Yes, sir, we can. As soon as law enforcement gives us permission to do so, we can. Do you have, I mean, are you, do you have, do you have funds to do, are you able to do that? 
regularly doing keepers. Welcome. Thank you. The local nonprofit 501c3 for the last 12 years been dealing with daily vessels in Palm Beach County. We've removed 238 vessels in Palm Beach County waterways in the last 11 years, six in the last two weeks. Wow. All around the United Island, all over this last week. Yes, we can. We have to do law enforcement directly to do it. Um, and is that which law enforcement? Clearly, if you need it, there is a state registered boat, it's not a documented vessel. So, a state officer, FWC, sheriff, uh, the Marine Unit, anybody can do it. Can't look into right guy. Statute 327.44 is what it needs to be removed. Do you need money to do this? Uh, money's not an issue, yes, the web have somebody paid for it, but we got 600 people that write us checks every year. Okay. Money's not an issue. The, uh, the responsible party, the boat owner, should be more paid. Of course. Okay. Right. Right. Thank you for your help in advance. Thank you. Um, our next meeting is Thursday, March 17th. Any further comments from this one? What's that? Say it back. Can we move well, the meeting to another day? I can't attend. Okay. Let me check it out. Okay. Is there a motion to adjourn? Adjourn. Thank you, everyone.